Well, hello guys. Uh, Johnny Lightning is uh, doing another vlog. What else is new? But, uh, <laughs> so anyways guys, uh, I apologize for not doing an edition of uh, Odds and Ends on uh, Thursday like I usually do, but um, since my grandma's here, uh, you know, spend more time with family and, um, but I got my stuff, but uh, I can tell you right now that there will be odds and ends today. Uh, I just gotta find the time to do it because, uh, well right now, uh, my uncle just took her to go see her new house because the reason why she's out here is uh, she's moving out here and she's living with us until uh, all of her stuff from California comes out here. So, uh, yeah, but other than that, I think I'm gonna try and, uh, do my vlogs as usual, but uh, I don't know if um, if my grandma likes to be uh, filmed or not, though. But uh, <laughs> um, she also might think it'd be a little weird if I'm talking to a camera and everything, and then I have to tell her, you know, I'm doing vlogs from time to time just to you know keep people entertained and whatnot, though. But um, so other than that, um, I feel like this is gonna be one of those uh, days where it's just a short vlog and nothing really happens, so there's no point in filming. But uh, like I said, I will promise you guys uh, odds and ends for sure, and uh, let's just go from there. We have a dead kitty. Now the kitty is sleeping on his back. That's how he always sleeps. Awkward sleeping position for the gato again. So apparently, my cat has found a new favorite spot on the computer desk. And just when things couldn't get worse, as soon as we get home, they got into the trash can, knocked it over, and all this stuff is everywhere. They are the ones to blame. Yeah, both of you. Well, hello guys. This is another edition of uh, Odds and Ends, and I apologize for it being late, but uh, I have a special guest with me, as you can see. We call her the Dingo Baby now, but um, she's probably not going to be here for very long. But um, So anyways, uh, I'll try to do this as uh, fast as I can, uh, and I uh, hope you guys can forgive me for being late, though, but uh, I should be back on schedule probably by next week. So, uh... <coughs> so anyways, let's get started. Uh, in England, robbing banks can be stressful, so perhaps we shouldn't judge bumbling crooks so harshly. Still, it's pretty embarrassing that a man who tried to rob the Halifax Bank in London bund bungled the assignment to handing his gun over to the cashier. A report in the Daily Telegraph says that on October 22nd, a man wearing sunglasses and a flat cap pulled out a gun and demanded 700,000 pounds in cash. He then gave his gun to the shocked cashier. Quote, this man is not the sharpest tool in the box, a police spokesperson told the newspaper. Quote, the guess is that he is very inexperienced and panicked when he approached the cashier, handing, his, handing over his gun instead of, the ba instead of a bag by mistake. Realizing the error, the disarmed robber tried to snatch back his weapon, but security shutters came down, shutting off the ac his access to the cashiers. Bank staff immediately set off the alarm. However, the thief escaped by stealing a bank worker's bicycle and pedaling away. The bank has put up a £25,000 reward for information connecting concerning the robbery, and police have released C CCTV footage of the man. Wow. You gotta really be stupid to hand over your gun instead of uh, your bag, and you're robbing a bank. Ah, oh, yeah, people, man. And now in the U.S., in New York, a school employee scammed a whole extra week of vacation by fooling her boss into thinking her daughter had died. The New York Daily News reports 58-year-old Joan Barnett had one of her daughters called the Manhattan High School of Hospitality Management to say that her sister had suffered a heart attack while on vacation in Costa Rica. Barnett ha then had another daughter call the school several hours later to report that her sister had died and that the family would be traveling to Costa Rica for the funeral. Mrs. Barnett even faxed a forged death certificate to the school as proof of death. 
The ruse allowed Barnett to stretch her school-sanctioned spring break into two and a half weeks in the tropical country during March of 2010. According to a report, the school became suspicious of the death certificate because it claimed, quote, slightly different fonts which were not aligned properly. Costa Rican government officials confirmed the certificate was fake. Barnett later submitted a second death certificate which slightly different with slightly different information. Barnett was ultimately fired from her $37,000 a year job. The case eventually went to court this past fall, and Barnett pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor court of forgery. Wow, really? Just to have an extra two and a half weeks of school, you decided to fake uh, your sister's death? Really? And you make $37,000 a year, which really isn't that much, though. But at least you should be doing something better by then, so. Oh, well, you're in jail now, so who knows? Maybe we could be doing in there. And uh, moving on. In Wisconsin, Bizao Dudu Zippity Bop Bop Bop, I kid you not, that's his name, was arrested earlier this month by Madison police for several parole violations. According to the Capital Times, Mr. Zippity Bop 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 was charged with possession of marijuana and carrying a concealed knife on January 5th after our area residents complained to police about ex ex excessive drinking and drug use near Reynolds Park. Quote, officers contacted a subject that had previous dealings with, identified as Bizao Dudu Zippity Bop Bop Bop. Police spokesperson Howard Payne told the newspaper. The 30-year-old suspect, who legally changed his name from Jeffrey Drew, Wilkshake, or Wilkshake, I don't know how you pronounce his last name, in October, was arrested last April for possessing a loaded gun in another Madison Park. Zippity Bop Bop's most recent arrest was considered a violation of his previously set bail conditions, and he was taken back to jail. You gotta have one crazy name, but uh, honestly, I think that name is pretty, it's weird, but yet unique at the same time. But if it was me, uh, I think my name would have been a lot more better than that. But uh, moving on to our final story. In Florida, police in Gangsville engaged in an extended car chase, car chase with a suspect who admitted he didn't want to pull over until he finished smoking his crack. And I tell people to stop smoking crack, but this one just takes it over the edge. On the night of Saturday, January 7th, Gainesville police officers tried to pull over a blue pickup truck because it had only one working light headlight. Officers turned on their lights and sirens as soon as the vehicle ran a red light, but the driver refused to yield. An Alkalua County Sheriff's Office deputy joined the chase shortly after it was spilled onto the US 441. Some 15 miles later, the suspect pulled over at a kangaroo gas station in Manicopee. Kenneth P. Stein, 53, told police he had not pulled over intentionally because he wanted to smoke the crack he had just purchased before going to jail. Wow, people. He was arrested for fleeing and attempting to elude possession of drug paraphernalia and violating his felony drug probation. Wow, this guy really, really is stupid. Oh yeah, officer, I want to smoke my crack before I go to jail. And I'm going to jail anyway. God, man. But um, anyways, guys, uh, I apologize for this being a late uh, odds and ends. And uh, the baby's starting to go asleep on my lap. The baby dingo. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this odds and ends. And uh, like I said before, I should be back on schedule really soon. And uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, another time. So... Well, hello guys. Uh, I apologize for this being another late edition of uh, Odds and Ends, and uh, I have a special guest, as you can see. But um, probably she probably won't be here for long though. But uh, I'm just gonna do this uh, really quick, and then, uh, like I said, I apologize. So, but uh, forgive me. But uh, so let's get started. In England, robbing banks can be stressful, so perhaps we shouldn't judge bumbling crooks so harshly. Still, it's pretty embarrassing that a man who tried to rob. Fucking firefighters, man. That's why I hate living here.